Among the elements of credibility in the said election, he enumerated the following. One, a substantial increase was realized in the number of voters from 14.4 million in 2013 to 19.6 million in 2017, being 78% of the eligible voters. Two, an audit of the register had been conducted before the date of voting. Three, the register had been opened for verification of biometric data by numbers, by members of the public. Four, a timetable had been published for political party primaries, gazettes, Notice of the 17th of March 2017. Five, resolving of disputes from the nomination uh, process for candidates. Six, registering of over 14,500 candidates to participate in the 2017 general election. Seven, gazettement of 40,883 polling stations and 338 tallying centers across the country including the prisons and the diaspora. Eight, gazettement of returning officers. Nine, acquiring of an integrated electoral management system for voter registration, voter identification, <coughs> candidate registration, resource transmission. 10, recruitment, training, and deployment of 360,000 election officials across the country. 11, continuous voter education programs undertaken across the country using different strategies and platforms. 12, attracting over 15,000 individual observers, 105 international observer institutions, 254 local institutions, more than 7,000 journalists from over 30 local and international media houses accredited to participate in the general election. The next opponent, James Mohati, who holds the Office of Director in Charge of Information and Communication Technology at IEBC, made the positions bearing upon the statements made by the first petitioner and by Ms. April uh, Oichoe and Mr. Godfrey Osotsi. He averred that the commissions had taken up suggestions made in the Kriegler report, which was formulated in the wake of the violent election of 2007, and had deployed certain technological mechanisms to support the management of the electoral process, this being the biometric voter register, the electronic voter identification device, the candidate nomination system, and the result transmission system. When the new electronic system was first utilized in 2013, the deponent averred it was found to have certain imperfections, and it became necessary to amend Section 44 of the Elections Act mandating IABC to establish an integrated electronic system. This would facilitate the conduct of biometric voter registration, electronic voter re identification, and electronic resource transmission. That is the Kenya Integrated Electoral Management System, KIMS. This new system, the deponent averred, was successfully employed during the 8th of August 2017 general election, and it enabled IABC to properly verify the biometric data during the 10th of May uh, uh, 2017 to 9th of June uh, 2017 verification exercise as required by law. It also enabled the proper verification of voters on polling day, and it enabled the due transmission of election results from polling station to constituency and to national tallying center. The deponent averred that he was aware of the terms of the Constitution and the statutory and regulatory framework within which the electoral process had been conducted, and in this context, he cited Articles 81, 86 of the Constitution as read with Section 4M and of the IEBC Act, which required the voting setup to be simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, accountable, transparent. He deposed that the Kims had been established with the approval of the Elections Technology Advisory Committee under the terms of Section 44.8 of the Elections Act and with the participation of relevant agencies and institutions, including political parties, and he attached the relevant document exhibit JM1 on the role of ICT in the general election on the 8th of August 2017, 
the deponent averred that a technological process had been used in voter identification and the transmission of results, and that the transmission component in KIMS had enabled the Commission to relay the presidential election results and statistics from the polling stations to the constituency telling centers and to the national telling center <coughs> during the transmission of election results through KIMS, the presiding officer would complete Form 34A as required by law and then input on the KIMS the results statistics captured on Form 34A. The presiding officer would then take the image of Form 34A and before sending the data, he or she would first show the entries made to the agents of the candidates and of the political parties for confirmation. <coughs> he annexed as evidence copies of the directions issued to the presiding officers, the training manual, and the transmission flow chart JM5A, JM5B, JM5C, respectively. <coughs> it was the deponent's evidence that the petitioner's allegations that the delay and transmission was not simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, accountable, transparent, open, and prompt, and that there had been a contravention of the terms of Article 81, E, 4, and 5 of the Constitution did not represent the truth, especially as no evidence had been adduced to support the claims. On the question, <coughs> of the security and verifiability of the electronic system <clears throat> and in relation to the allegation that there had been some compromise to the KIM system by unauthorized third parties, the deponent averred that such claims have no relation to the true position, noting also that they are not supported by evidence. He averred that the Commission had engaged a competent support team of experts who subsequently partnered with internationally recognized and accredited institutions to provide the best information security system and the next relevant exhibit, JM8A, JM8B, JM8C, JM8D. <clears throat> the deponent gave testimony on the complementary system in the transmission of election results for compliance with the terms of Article 38 of the Constitution. He averred that Regulation 83 of the Elections General Regulation 2012 provided for the complementary system of transmission of election results and that the complementary mechanism involves the physical delivery of Form 34A by presiding officers to the returning officers in the respective constituencies. IEBC's Director of Voter Registration and Electoral Operation, Ms. Iman Immaculate Kasait, averred that contrary to the negative impression given by some of the petitioners' witnesses on early transmissions of election results for some stations, <coughs> such stations had only a few voters, sometimes numbering between, um, between one and ten. And counting these would take only a short time. She gave examples in this regard of Boyani Primary School in Matuga constituency, Arabro in Wajir South constituency, Ya Algana in North Hall constituency, Loangena Primary School in Tigania East constituency. The deponent denied the veracity of the claim by some of the petitioner's deponents that there had been in the transmission of election results a constant 11% difference in vote strength between the first petitioner and the third respondent. She displayed a table in her affidavit based on a 30-minute interval analysis of transmitted election results data. And this showed the vote difference to range in percentage between 9.095% to 25.573%. The deponent denied the allegation in Dr. Nyangasi's affidavit that the first respondent had chased away from polling stations the agents of the first petitioner in central Kenya and in Rift Valley. She gave examples of polling stations 
in central Kenya, in which indeed the petitioner's agents had duly executed forms 34A. The deponent admitted a case of an erroneous entry of data in a station where the petitioner had been credited with two votes instead of 561 votes, indicating that the circumstances in which such error occurred were explained in the first respondent's affidavit, Mr. John Ole Taiswa. She deponed that a similar explanation of error was also set out in the affidavit of Ms. Rebecca Abwaku. The deponent took on specific instances in which the depositions made for the petitioner and which attributed misrepresentation of vote count were based on <clears throat> untrue perceptions of fact. For instance, that a partial Form 34B was uploaded in respect of Karachuonyo constituency. That in Kilome constituency, the original Form 34B reflected 38,269 votes, while that uploaded in IABC's portal showed 33,757 votes. That in Igembe South, the summation of total votes in Form 34A for the first respondent was 41,834, yet by Form 34B in the Commission's portal, his total votes were 43,209. <clears throat> that the Form 34A in respect to St. John's Primary School polling station indicated the total number of valid votes cast as 468 against the entry on Form 34B, which showed 467. That there was a variance between <clears throat> the Form 34B keyed in on the Kim skate and that, <clears throat> that projected at the National Telling Center for Morrison Primary School polling station that there were any discrepancies in Forms 34B for Mbakasi South constituency and Forms 34A for Jobena Community School, that there were any discrepancies in Forms 34B and 34A in respect of Kiru Primary School polling station. <clears throat> the deponent, while disagreeing with most of the claims made by the petitioners, admitted the occurrence of certain errors, for instance, there were discrepancies in Forms 34B in Bomet Central constituency to the extent that at Bomet Primary School, the form did not show any rejected votes while there was one rejected vote. In the case of Kapkoros Primary School in Turbo constituency, there was a computation error, though the total vote cast in respect of each candidate was correctly tallied. <coughs> there was a computation error <coughs> in the case of Dagoretti North constituency, <coughs> with the total valid votes being shown as 104,789 rather than 105,840. <coughs> in the case of Naivasha constituency, there were arithmetic errors in the, yeah, in the completion of the forms for several <clears throat> polling stations. In the case of Kiangai Primary School in Dia constituency, Form 34A indicated the third response votes as 461, while Form 34B showed these as 467. There was a data, error, data entry error in the case of game constituency, with a, a variance between the total votes tallied and the total valid votes. <clears throat> the third respondent made the positions to the effect that he had at all material times been the president of the Republic of Kenya, as well as the nominated presidential election candidate for the Jubilee Party following the earlier general election of the 4th of March 2013. <clears throat> Regarding the integrity of the first respondent, in his conduct of the 2017 general election, the third respondent deponed that the IEBC was a reconstituted team, drawing its origin from the endeavors of NASA, of the NASA coalition's predecessor, CORD, which in May 2016 had held a nationwide, <coughs> had held nationwide 
rally is culminating in the removal from office of the former commissioners and the amendment of the Elections Act. The said protest led to a bipartisan parliamentary process which crystallized a new legal framework attended with the resignation from office of the then commissioners and the appointment of the current commissioners who managed, who managed the elections of the 8th of, of August 2017. <clears throat> the deponent averred that the presidential election of the 8th of August 2017 had been preceded by considerable litigation on electoral matters in the superior courts, promoted by Cord and NASA coalition, notably the minor KI case. There was also NASA by, by, uh, against IEBC, Republic against IEBC, Expert Gladwell Lutieno. Those are examples. <clears throat> it was the third respondent's perception that the Commission had complied with the law in the conduct of the general election of the 8th of August 2017 especially with directions issued by the courts in the various election-related cases. This perception is founded upon a certain set of facts as follows. One, election materials, including biometric voter verification kits and ballot papers, were timelessly conveyed to all polling stations in the country at large. Two, the biometric voter verification case was successfully applied in all polling stations. Three, the voting process came up against no impediment throughout the country. Four, candidates and all their agents and political party agents were allowed in at the polling stations to monitor the process of voting, telling, recording, and transmission of results. Five, presiding officers at each polling station not only submitted Form 34A in electronic form in the presence of the candidates and all their agents, but submitted also the scanned copy of Form 34A to the constituency telling center. Six, other than minimum human errors, which are to be expected, the data entered in the KIMS, particularly with regard to votes received by the individual presidential election candidates was accurate. Seven, nonetheless, the results electronically transmitted through KIMS were only provisional and did not constitute the final figures which were announced by the second respondent. It is notable in this regard that the second, the first respondent had made it clear that in the event of any difference between the alphanumeric results sent through KIMS and the results reflected on the forms 34A, the results on the forms 34A would prevail. Eight, at each constituency telling center, the Forms 34A received from the polling stations were collected by the returning officer and a declaration in the Form 34B reflecting the same was signed by the returning officer and the candidates or their agents, verifying that the Forms 34A received were a true reflection of the vote count recorded by the presiding officers at the polling stations. Nine, the signed Forms 34B were thereafter scanned and transmitted to the National Telling Center electronically. 10. All transmitted Forms 34A were held accessible to all parties, and all Forms 34B were printed and availed to the presidential election agents at the National Telling Center. 11. The presidential election results were declared by the second respondent on the basis of the results declared in Forms 34A at the polling stations and tallied in Forms 34B at the constituency telling centers. The third respondent deponed that the petitioners had failed to set out the particulars of the non-compliance with the Constitution and the law which they alleged by the first respondent. Hence, their charge had rested merely upon conjecture and 
speculation. As to the petitioner's contention that there were discrepancies between the forms 34A and 34B bearing the election results, the third respondent averred that no instances of such variance had been shown, and in his perception, even assuming such allegations were true, the discrepancies would stand as no more than clerical errors, such as would affect the election results in view of the large difference separating the third respondent and the first petitioner in vote strength. The deponent averred that it would not have been possible for the first respondent to manipulate or distort the votes cast and counted in favor of the third respondent, considering the rigorous statutory procedures observed by the first respondent. And moreover, the final results of the presidential election had been duly verified by the political parties and individual candidates through their agents. The effect being that such election results were a true reflection of the will of the voters. In the third respondent's perception, the first respondent in the conduct of the general election of the 8th of August 2017 had all along acted in a lawful and transparent manner as it undertook the tasks, the tasks of various stages of the election, including early preparations, voting process, vote counting at the polling stations, tallying at the constituency and the national tallying centers, and the transmission of results at all levels. The mode of conduct of the election in the third respondent's perception was efficient, accountable, accurate, credible. The third respondent averred that he had garnered at the presidential election of the 8th of August 2017, a substantial vote represented in the figure of 1,401,286, above the number obtained by the first petition. Such a margin, in the deponent's view, emphatically demonstrated the sovereign will of the Kenyan people, which made it safeguard by the process of the law. The third respondent denied the petitioner's contention that he had contravened the law and the declared principles for the conduct of free and fair election through the medium of intimidation, coercion, or improper influence on voters. He averred that such allegations have been made without any evidentiary basis. He deponed that the presidential election had been conducted peacefully and in accordance with the law, as well as best international practice. The third respondent deponed that he had difficulty in responding to accusations emanating from the petitioners and their witnesses, which were imprecise and lacked particulars. While he found Dr. Nyangasi's depositions to be in the category of such generalized statements, he nonetheless went on to deny that he corruptly influenced voters in the run-up to the election of the 8th of August, 2017. He denied that he had used threats to get support from local chiefs in Makueni. He denied being aware of any cabinet secretaries who abused their offices and accorded him electoral support, and invoked several other affidavits in support of his affirmance, those by Dr. Kibicho, Mr. Wakahu, Mr. Chirchir, and Ms. Gushu. Mr. Chirchir, who had been the chief presidential agent during the 2017 elections, deponed that the said elections had been free, fair, and accountable, credible, and verifiable. He deponed that the majority vote cast for the third respondent was a natural reflection of the general national voting orientation, which gave the third respondent's jubilee party the greatest number of votes for the five other categories of election, elective posts also failed 
through the same general election of the 8th of August 2017. Denying the averments in Mr. Kegoro's affidavit for the petitioners, the deponent averred that the processes of voting, collating and tallying of votes, and declaration of results had been conducted in compliance with the provisions of the Constitution and the electoral laws, and that the presidential election results announced by the second respondent on the 11th of August 2017 were accurate and in compliance with the prescribed standards. The deponent averred that at the time of declaration of the presidential election outcome, the first respondent's online portal had not yet transmitted all the results, and these results were being retrieved from Form 34A arriving from polling stations, which results had already been transmitted to the constituency level, and the inconsistency in the data displayed was on account of Forms 34A, 34B, and 34C that had not yet been transmitted on the online portal. He deponed that as at the 21st of August 2017, at 8.14 a.m., the transmission rate was 99.99%. And this meant that the reported valid votes in the figure of 15 million 180,381 at the portal did not include all valid votes from all the 40,823 polling stations of the country. It was Mr. Chirchi's averment that the violence witnessed several days following the declaration of results by the second respondent was occasioned by the demands by the petitioners that they be declared president elect and deputy president elect on the basis that the petitioners were already in possession of what they believed to be the genuine results secured from the first respondent's travers. Such a crisis, the deponent, the deponent of heard, had been deepened by a press conference in which the petitioners urged their supporters to reject such vote count results as would later be announced on the basis of a collation of results in Form 34C. Mr. Brian Gichana Omwenga, a technology advisor employed by the Jubilee Party, averred in his affidavit that it was not true, as deposed by Mr. Olekina, that Form 34A had been used to declare the presidential election results, rather he deponed, it is the Form 34B that provide the basis for declaring such results. Mr. Omwenga deponed that the process of electronically transmitting presidential election results had not, in all cases, functioned without a hitch. Sometimes the scanned image would fail to load or would delay in loading especially in those parts of the country that lacked the 3G or 4G network coverage. It was his testimony that such network challenges had been anticipated. And so the first respondent had duly sounded necessary caution. However, the deponent averred, regardless of whether the electronic system duly functioned, the Forms 34A would still be physically delivered at the constituency telling center. And the Form 34A would then be used to tally the constituency votes. And thereafter, the results would be entered in Form 34B. The Form 34B would then be transmitted to the National Telling Center, where the commission would sum up in Form 34C which would be the basis for declaring the results. Consequently, the deponent averred, it was not necessary to have Forms 34A in possession during the summation of presidential election results. It followed, therefore, that the early voting results transmitted on television screens were only provisional, and the authoritative results 
would be based on the constituency tally in Forms 34B. Dr. Karanja Kibicho, in his affidavit sworn on the 24th of August 2017, carries the positions focused upon the statements made on behalf of the petitioners by Dr. Nyangasi Oduo. He averred that in his capacity as Principal Secretary in the Ministry of Inter Interior and Coordination of Government, he had in July 2017, 2017 received information that some chiefs in Makueni were unlawfully using their positions as well as government facilities to participate in political campaigns, whereupon he duly informed the third respondent who issued the necessary warning to hold such practice. Ms. Mary Karen Keegan Sorobit, the Jubilee Party's Deputy Chief Executive Officer, made the positions in response to the statements of Mr. Wamuru for the petitioners. She averred that Mr. Wamuru had cited non-existent polling stations and claimed that the NASA coalition agents had been exclu excluded from certain polling stations. The deponent annexed evidence in the form of Form 34A, showing that one Ms. Eunice Mudoni Nduiga had been the NASA agent at the Karurumo Youth Polytechnic Polling Center and had duly signed the form without any reservation. The deponent averred that Mr. Benson Wasonga, for the petitioners, has stated that there were anomalies in the declaration of presidential election results, though without specifying the particulars of such anomalies. She deposed that the summation of the total valid votes in the portal is 15,180,381, and that by Form 34C, the first petitioner's votes were 6,762,000, Six seven hundred and sixty two thousand two forty four, while those for the third respond were eight million two hundred three thousand two hundred and ninety. Miss Winifred Washeke Gushu saw an affidavit on the twenty fourth of August twenty seventeen in her capacity as the executive director of the Jubilee Party and deputy chief presidential agent for the third respondent. She averred that the difference of 1,441,066 votes that separated the vote tallies of the third respondent and the first petitioner was a strong enough signal by the voters who are expressing their free and sovereign will. And she perceived it as relevant to the orientation in political choice that the Jubilee Party won the majority of elected positions for the office of county governor, senator, member of the National Assembly, women's representative in the National Assembly, and member of county assembly, all from the same general election. 